Buffalo Bills safety 24 year old Damar Hamlin collapsed on the ground and had to be administered CPR before being sent by ambulance to the hospital. Hamlin went into cardiac arrest out on the field after the tackle. This was a game between the Bills and the Bengals, and he is currently in critical condition. So let's get into some more details of his injury. Ryan Miller reporting from Democrat and Chronicle said Hamlin tackled Cincinnati wide receiver T Higgins, got to his feet and then crumpled to the ground. A stretcher and ambulance came onto the field as most of the Bills roster came off the sidelines to kneel or stand around Hamlin. First responders administered CPR to Hamlin on the field and used an automated external defibrillator. More than 15 minutes passed from the time Hamlin collapsed to when he was taken off the field. A little after 10 p.m. Eastern Time, ESPN said on the broadcast that the game was suspended for the night without an immediate update on whether or when the game would be played. And Hamlin was given oxygen as he was loaded into an ambulance. He was transported to University of Cincinnati Medical Center, the region's only adult level one trauma center. Hamlin's mother was in attendance at the game and rode with him to the hospital. Um, Former NFL football player Ryan Clark chimed in on Hamlin's condition and the dangerous life risking aspect of football. I think the the first thing this is this um this is about Demar Hamlin Mm -hmm. and um, it's about a young man at 24 years old that was living his dream that a few hours ago was getting ready to play the biggest game of his NFL career. And there's probably nowhere else in the world he wanted to be. And now he fights for his life. You realize this isn't just football. And so many times in this game and in our job as well, we use the cliches, you know, I'm ready to die for this. I'm willing to give my life for this. It's, it's time to go to war. And I think sometimes we use those things so much We forget that part of living this dream is putting your life at risk. And tonight, you know, we got to see a side of football that is extremely ugly. We should remember that these men are putting their lives on the line to live their dream. And tonight, Damar Hamlin's dream became a nightmare for not only himself, but his family and his entire team. Injuries in football is a common problem, especially in the NFL with an average influx of CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. From Cognitive FX, a recent study of brains donated by deceased former football players found CTE in 99% of the brains of NFL players, in 88% of Canadian Football League players, and in 91% of college players. Athletes who reach this level of the game have been playing football and sustaining impacts for many years and are thus at a higher risk of developing CTE. So after Hamlin was removed from the field, his friends and his friend and his marketing rep shared an update on his condition. So this tweet from Jordan Rooney, he said, update on Demar. His vitals are back to normal and they have put him to sleep to put a breathing tube down his throat. They are currently running tests. We will provide updates as we have them. Now this is an exceptionally tragic situation. All of our thoughts and prayers are with Damar in his recovery. We've seen a lot of the fans and supporters rally around him. He's so far raised $3 million for his charity, which seeks to provide Christmas presents to low income children. So there's a lot of support coming out for him. There's also a lot of haters like Charlie Kirk, who decided to chime in on Twitter over Hamlin's condition so that he could push his anti-vax agenda. So let's pull that tweet up. Charlie Kirk said, this is a tragic and all too familiar sight right now, athletes dropping suddenly. So this is a vague tweet and if you aren't familiar with Charlie Kirk and the context behind this, you might not pick up that this is an anti-vax statement. But early in 2022, Charlie Kirk had interviewed Senator Ron Johnson who made the false claim that athletes were dropping dead on the field due to the COVID vaccine. So Glenn Kessler of the Washington Post reported that Johnson made this comment after he asserted that there have been over 22,000 deaths reported in association with the coronavirus vaccines. And then quickly adding, that doesn't prove causation and just wanted to point out that he only added that to cover up his own ass. 
Um, but more from that article, we've explored before how Johnson routinely raises concerns about vaccines by citing data from the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, also known as VAERS, a database co-managed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration. Anyone could submit a report to VAERS and the reports are not verified. The numbers are basically meaningless. So using this horrifying tragedy to promote your anti-vax agenda is disgusting. But I also want to highlight something else that's disgusting. There was a lot of football fans, football commentators who were saying that the game needs to continue. They were disappointed that the, the game was postponed for the night. Because they were saying things like, it's late in the season, we need to get this result, which is horrifying to me. And I'm not a football fan, but I am a soccer fan. And in 2020, Christian Eriksen had a heart attack on the field during a Euros match against Finland. And he had to be resuscitated, he died on the pitch. And they suspended the match for a period of time. But then finished it after they took him to the hospital without knowing whether or not he was gonna make it. So in that case, they made the wrong decision. And in this case, they made the absolute right call because some things are more important than the game, such as the the lives, the lives of the players. And of course, there's also the concern of, you know, the the concerns from the teammates, the concerns from the fans, the concerns from the family. Damar Hamlin's life is worth so much more than the result of this one game. And anyone who says otherwise, it just disgusts me. Waz, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's just so many things going through my mind as somebody who's basically been watching football since I can remember. I had to be like five years old um, when I started watching football. Of course, um, thinking about his family and, and wishing them well. And I hope that he's able to recover from this. Uh, but yeah, it's just the, the sad reality is just that football is a brutal sport. Um, and if we're being honest, I think a lot of the appeal of the sport, the brutality is baked into the appeal for fans, even like myself, right? Um, the violence is baked in to the appeal. So you can't separate what people love about football from the violence of the game. It's it's all one and, and of a piece with one another and people get hurt all the time, right? Um, you know, I don't really want to give too much <laughs> light to Charlie Kirk and, and clowns like him, but like on the one hand, you have um football and its history, and you can go find plenty of ex players from any generation you want who are having difficult times living normal lives because of the ailments that they sustained, both physical, um, neurological, you name it, psychological, that they sustained from their years playing football. And then you have a quack like Charlie Kirk and what he's spewing about vaccines. That I mean, that's that's just stupid, um, in my opinion. But you know, it's funny what you mentioned about the game not going on. To be honest, that's that's a shift from normalcy. People get carted off of the field all the time in football. Sometimes they get carted off in ambulances and the game usually goes on. Um, the fact that players and coaches basically told the league like we're not playing, it's over. This is done, we're not playing tonight. Like did we just damn near watched a guy die on the field. We're not doing this, you know, we're not just gonna be cogs in the machine of capital and I get it, there's a game to be played. There's, you know, um, they, they signed a contract with ESPN saying they would deliver X amount of games. This game is part of that contract and there might be some financial repercussions to it. And we understand that. However, man, I wanna, you know, I wanna applaud those people, um, the players and the coaches for really putting their foot down and being like, we're not gonna do the football thing and just move on and just next man up this. Um, this guy's a human being. Uh, and he, you know, he damn near lost his life on the actual field of play. Um, so I was heartened by that to see that. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to wrap this up by reading this one comment that we got on Twitch from Josh Sess, who said, not to mention if the players aren't focused, that can cause even more injuries. That is 100% correct. And the, you know, concern of the league should primarily be with the health and the safety of the players. But of course, under capitalism, it's more often the case that their concern is making money. So we'll keep an eye out on DeMar Hamlin's condition. We're all rooting for him and proud of the, the players who 
refused to continue on with the game in solidarity with their teammate.